He lived and studied in China for eight years and hails the bilateral friendship as eternal. Endorsing China's proposal of building a community with a shared future, he calls for a world free of sanctions and coercion. Rejecting calls for Taiwan independence, he believes that reunification will eventually take place. In the run-up to the first China Central Asia summit, Kasim Jomar Tokayev, the president of Kazakhstan, sat down with Leader Stock for an exclusive interview. Hello and welcome to Leaders Talk, where we meet leaders, thinkers, and trailblazers. I'm Mongwan Niasana, and our guest today is Kasim Jamar Tokayev, the president of Kazakhstan. Now, China and Kazakhstan have described each other as permanent, comprehensive strategic partners. Is China and Central Asia at large, and China and Kazakhstan in particular, moving closer strategically? A fluent Mandarin Chinese speaker, how does Tokayev look at China and its global influence? Here's my conversation with President Tokayev. President Tokayev, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's an honor to have you on Leaders Talk on China Media Group. It's my pleasure. President Tokayev, you are president of this country. You're also author of 10 books on international relations. Um, you repeatedly said that you wanted to build a new Kazakhstan with fairness at the center of it all. How would you summarize your philosophies of governance? Where do you want to take Kazakhstan? I want to put my country just in the center of the Eurasian continent. Kazakhstan plays a very important role in uh, bridging up trade routes, international relations on this part of the world. So Kazakhstan is a very important country. I believe that uh, Kazakhstan's future must be bright. That's why I put my all efforts in order to promote further development of uh, Kazakhstan as a, an advanced country with a very developed uh, economy. President Tokayev, Kazakhstan has a very, very unique location. Uh, has been called many different things over the years. Uh, some scholars say Kazakhstan, quote unquote, holds the key to a new geopolitical balance in Eurasia. Others call it a diplomatic bridge between the East and the West. Um, how would you describe the role of Kazakhstan in today's geopolitical realities? Kazakhstan is a territory of peace and friendship. Uh, diplomatically, it means that we want to host international forums, conferences, to bring all the peoples who strongly believe in constructing peaceful bridges uh, between so many conflicting nations together. That's why Kazakhstan's future in the contemporary world uh, is becoming increasingly important. On many occasions, Mr. President, you talk about the fact that you wanted to build this balanced, multi-directional foreign policy. Um, first of all, how would you define this balanced uh, multi-vectorism or multi-directionism? It means that uh, we want uh, uh, as many friends around the world as it's possible. And on the international arena, we are highly responsible as far as safety, security are concerned. So I believe that Kazakhstan will be successful in pursuing this kind of foreign policy. It is our historic destiny to be peaceful, to benefit from a friendly relationship with all countries. First of all, with our immediate neighbors, where China plays an extremely important role. But the reality is, Mr. President, Kazakhstan is the world's largest landlocked country that borders great powers. And also, if you think about the fact that Kazakhstan has complex relations uh, with many countries who are currently involved in geopolitical tensions, uh, does that make Kazakhstan's pursuit of balanced, multi-directional foreign policy um, more difficult? Yes, from time to time, it uh, becomes increasingly uh, difficult, but at the same time, we strongly believe and we are committed uh, to pursuing uh, uh, this uh, balanced, multi-directional foreign policy. You are right, uh, Kazakhstan is a huge country in terms of its uh, territory, but at the same time, of course, it's important to ensure our environment, political environment, 
to be very friendly to our economy. Uh, let's talk about China, um, Kazakhstan relations. Uh, this relationship has been described by both sides as permanent, comprehensive, strategic partnership. Uh, this is very unique in China's foreign policy. Uh, actually, I learned that you are personally invested in the coining of this term. Uh, can you tell us the thinking behind it and how would you position China in Kazakhstan's current foreign policy? Uh, China uh, plays a very important role in our foreign policy. In September 2019, I went to China to pay a state visit. And we had excellent talks uh, with Chairman Xi Jinping. And we agreed to pursue mutually beneficial policy of bringing our peoples together. It means that we should enjoy strategic partnership, eternal uh, friendship between both countries. I think that it is very much in the interests, in the long-standing interests of the Kazakh people. And I'm very much committed to this kind of policy. And of course, we have no doubts about the importance of having strategic partnership uh, with our immediate neighbor, China. But if you think about the word eternal, um, some would say this is the tall order, uh, given the geopolitical realities. Are you confident that this relationship can be eternal? Yes, because as I already said and mentioned, we are both immediate neighbors. So it's our historic destiny. And uh, my task as president of this country to make sure that this friendship uh, will obtain a solid basis and will be mutually beneficial uh, politically and, of course, uh, economically. Let's talk about President Xi. You greeted the Chinese president. You met with him during his state visit last September. It was his first state visit since COVID. Uh, looking from the pictures, it was a very cordial and warm relationship between you and him. You spoke Chinese with him. Um, what do you think of him as a leader? And what do you think of his governance and policies? I believe that uh, Chairman Xi Jinping is a great leader of China. And he'll be leading China uh, for the bright future without any hesitations. I have a huge respect to him as president of uh, China. Uh, we enjoy a trustful relationship, I may say so. And I believe that uh, this kind of uh, personal relationship between both of us will be continuously developing because it's in the interests of both countries. He's a very wise man, uh, very polite, very cordial as you said. So I think that uh, we'll be enjoying uh, this kind of uh, mutual personal relationship in order to make sure that uh, the overall cooperation between both uh, Kazakhstan and China uh, eventually will become more successful. Uh, there have been a number of Chinese proposals over the years, um, including building a community of shared future, a global security initiative, global development initiative, and also global civilizations initiative. How do you look at those initiatives proposed by President Xi and by China? I regard them very positively. I think that it's a real contribution uh, to building a more predictable world in the future. And in general, of course, Kazakhstan supports the initiatives uh, put forward by President Xi Jinping. I have no doubts about the uh, positive uh, impacts on developing the world which must be free of discrimination, of sanctions, of pressure. Uh, so the world must be full of uh, good spirit, uh, friendship and cooperation. Uh, and President Xi said that uh, China's development path, which has been recently summarized at the Chinese path to modernization, it demonstrated that um, modernization doesn't necessarily mean westernization. Uh, looking at it as an international relations expert, as a diplomat, as a leader of a country, uh, what, do you, what do you make of it? What do you think of the Chinese path to modernization? The point is that uh, both uh, Kazakhstan and uh, China are being situated in Asia. So it's uh, senseless uh, to talk about the westernization because we have our own way of uh, developing. Uh, ourselves. But at the same time, of course, we need to use positive uh, experience that does exist in so many countries, including the West. First of all, I mean technologies, uh, education, and so on. So I think that uh, we must enrich each other by taking good lessons 
But at the same time, of course, there should be no interference in the domestic affairs of any countries from outside. Last January, there was a video summit between China and Central Asian leaders. And then in February, uh, you, along with four other Central Asian leaders, attended the opening of Beijing Winter Olympics. Uh, and then there will be this uh, China Central Asia summit in May. Um, is it your sense, too, that China and Central Asia are moving closer towards each other, not just economically, but also strategically? And in particular, what are your expectations for this China Central Asia summit, the first of its kind? My expectations uh, from the summit, uh, which is going to take place in Xi'an, uh, I mean, uh, Central Asia and China are very high. China plays increasingly uh, important role in our part of the world, in Central Asia, and it's quite natural. I think that uh, all my colleagues uh, in Central Asia would agree with me that uh, we benefit uh, from our relations with China and we'll be doing our best in order to promote this kind of cooperation. And then what would be your response to some uh, commentaries that say that uh, China and Central Asia are moving closer towards one another and you know, they're concerned about this uh, growing uh, closeness or intimacy uh, in, in this geopolitical balance? There should be no suspicions about that because uh, our intentions are quite open, sincere. The fact is that China, number two, in terms of its economy in the world, uh, China has become a juggernaut uh, in terms of its economic development. So we should acknowledge the role of China and we need to build very good relationship uh, with your country. Uh, talking about the economy, China has been Kazakhstan's large, one of Kazakhstan's largest uh, trading partners for many, many years. Uh, and you talk about the fact that you wanted to advance this economic partnership. Uh, do you have any specific areas or sectors in mind? I think that uh, we enjoy a very close relationship in so many areas. The overall trade between both states reached $31 uh, billion. In this context, of course, uh, China has shown itself as a very reliable partner. Uh, we are ready to develop uh, as many areas of mutual uh, cooperation as it's possible in the future. Uh, we welcome investments from China, uh, we welcome uh, businessmen from China, and I think that uh, we'll be hosting them very well here in Kazakhstan. I strongly believe, it. it's my personal belief as president of this country, that the Chinese investors are very good. There is joint program on vocational training. That is China working with Kazakhstan to help produce more uh, skilled workers uh, for the Kazakh economy. It is actually called the uh, Lubang Workshop. Cooperation such as this, how do you want to advance uh, bilateral economic relations going forward? Oh, we have excellent results uh, as far as economic cooperation is concerned, but we need to go forward. That's why I am hopeful about uh, my future visit uh, to Xi'an, which is a cradle of the Chinese civilization. And I believe that we need new agreements, uh, new deals, because uh, we shouldn't stay just on the ground and wait for some results to come. I think that uh, we need to take efforts to push forward uh, our economic ties in this complex world. And I would like to say that uh, I'm very much committed uh, to developing cooperation and uh, friendly ties between the youth of both countries. The younger generation uh, must know about each other quite well. That's why we should inspire them, encourage them uh, to have more exchanges. And you just mentioned Luban. He's a very um, uh, well-respected uh, craftsman. Yes, I know quite a lot of stories about him. So, of course, uh, here we'll be promoting the creation of Luban masterships. And what do you think this spirit of Luban uh, can help and inspire uh, workers on both sides? How do you think this can actually help bilateral relations to advance? It's one of the bridges uh, that may play a stimulating role uh, in promoting our bilateral cooperation. I just mentioned uh, about the exchange of views. I should mention the exchange of uh, those people who represent the cultures of our two countries, uh, sportsmen, and so on and so on. Like ping pong or table tennis? Yes, we welcome uh, ping pong masters from China to come 
about three or four years ago, there was a big tournament here uh, on table tennis, and uh, such uh, famous and outstanding players like uh, Ding Ling and others uh, came here to show their uh, art in table tennis, and we appreciate it, of course. Ten years ago, it was in the hall behind me here in Nazarbayev University where the Belt and Road Initiative was first proposed by Chinese President Xi Jinping. Ten years on, this program has generated a lot of headlines and debate around the world. In the course of 10 years of development, the Belt and Road Initiative has helped alleviate poverty in many regions and kickstart economic growth by facilitating trade and creating jobs. The BRI was first proposed by China, but it has become a mega project that has ripple effects around the world. Mr. President, we're marking the 10th anniversary of the BRI. How do you look at the merits of the BRI and what do you think has brought to your country? It's a very promising mega project and Kazakhstan strongly supports the concept which has been elaborated here 10 years ago by President Xi Jinping. This uh, project uh, may bring a lot of benefits for so many countries. So Kazakhstan plays a crucial role in implementing this project. It's a fact because uh, two of the six main corridors uh, went through Kazakhstan. Yes, and it's very much good that uh, both uh, Kazakhstan and China share the same language uh, as far as the implementation of this concept is concerned. It's one of the solid bases of our mutual cooperation and shared view uh, on what is happening outside of both countries. Yeah, if you think about the fact that China Railway Express, for example, uh, that is going through Kazakhstan, played a, a crucially important role during COVID because it's one of the very, very few corridors that delivered life-saving medicines, masks, ventilators to those in need to save lives. Yes, we have been very much close uh, during the pandemic and I appreciate uh, the support which has been provided uh, by China in this very difficult time. So we proved uh, to be friends, real friends. But at the same time, of course, as soon as the pandemic is over, I am hopeful about the future trade between both countries. And I think that we have a lot of opportunities, a lot of potential to develop further our mutual trade. And also another very important uh, regional organization that is taking uh, a global importance is Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And this year, Kazakhstan will assume the chairmanship of SEO. Um, how do you look at its role in the evolving geopolitical landscape? And what do you think a chairmanship from Kazakhstan can bring to this organization? The Shanghai Organization for Cooperation has proven to be a very promising, a very influential organization. And uh, it's uh, about China which has greatly supported the Shanghai Organization for Cooperation from the very beginning. Uh, this organization uh, has started uh, its activities in Shanghai in 1996. And as foreign minister of this country, I have been participating in the launching ceremony. So I'm proud uh, to have been involved in the activities of the Shanghai Organization for Cooperation from the very beginning. And uh, of course, uh, Kazakhstan is a future chairman and host country of the summit of this organization uh, will be doing its utmost in order to increase the potential of uh, SCO. And I believe that uh, this organization, as I have already said, uh, became a very famous, a very influential one uh, in the current world. From my personal uh, point of view, and uh, I have said it, at the summit in Bishkek, uh, the Shanghai Organization of Cooperation has become one of the most developed and successful organizations in the world. You know, some Western friends ask me what SEO is all about. Uh, they're like, oh, is this a, a, a NATO of the East? 
Um, how would you respond to their concerns and curiosity about the nature of this organization? Uh, the uniqueness uh, of the Shanghai Organization for Cooperation that we have a very much uh, diversified agenda. Uh, we talk and take measures not only in the security area or in the military domain, but uh, we take decisions uh, with regard to our economic cooperation, investment cooperation, cultural ties, and so many. It's not exaggeration of the potential of this organization. It's uh, the acknowledgement of the fact which does exist. And I think that uh, a lot of opportunities still uh, lie ahead uh, of this organization. And it's about us, including Kazakhstan, to make better this organization, to benefit from its potential and to bring uh, fortunes uh, and benefits to our peoples. Talking about international relations, Mr. President, um, in recent years, some countries framed China as a threat. Uh, there's both rhetoric and actual policies of antagonizing China, of attempting to decouple with China, and of containing China. Um, how do you feel about that? I feel sorry about that. Uh, I don't share this view, and we do not support uh, this concept. Speaking about Kazakhstan, we strongly believe that China is a very good uh, friend of my country. And looking back uh, in the historic developments, uh, China never made any damage to the Kazakh people. And of course, we keep it in our historic memory and we very much appreciate it. Talking about Taiwan, it is a hot button issue. Uh, actually, you recently said that uh, actually said it on many occasions that um, it is very important to uphold uh, territorial integrity for all countries. Uh, recently, you rejected calls for Taiwan independence. Uh, can you elaborate? We believe that uh, it's uh, a question which should be absolutely clear to everybody in the world. Taiwan is a part of China. So the principle of the territorial integrity of all states has been fixed in the Charter of the United Nations which must be respected. And this principle also has been put uh, in the declaration and in the charter of the Shanghai Organization for Cooperation. So once again, uh, for us, it's absolutely clear. Taiwan is a part of China, and we have no hesitations about that. Uh, would you support an eventual Chinese reunification? Yes, of course. I think that uh, eventual reunification will take place sooner or later. And uh, there are Chinese who live in Taiwan. There are Chinese who live in China. So they must be together. Uh, President Tokayev, let's talk about your personal relationship with China. You're one of the very, very few world leaders currently who speak fluent Mandarin Chinese. Uh, what kind of a unique lens does that give you um, to look at China? Because you also lived and studied in China for what, eight years? I studied in China from 83 to 84. I went uh, through the training courses uh, at the University of Culture and the Chinese language. So I really enjoyed this period of my life in China. I have uh, got acquainted uh, with your culture, with your language, and I really liked uh, the Chinese people and its traditions. So uh, it was one of the best times and uh, periods uh, of my life in China. You would ride a bicycle along the hutongs, yes. uh, visiting different places? Absolutely. Uh, I did it. <laughs> and I've been uh, enjoying. What was it like back then, if you compare that China versus that China time, today? Uh, Beijing was uh, a very fastly developing uh, city. And there were reforms. So the whole China was developing quite quickly and successfully, and we have been witnessing the growth of China, the progress of China. We lived in Wu uh, Daokor, Si Daokor. President Tokayev studied at Beijing Language and Culture University in 1983 and 1984. He was then posted to the Soviet Embassy in Beijing. In March 2019, Tokayev was sworn in as the President of Kazakhstan. A few months later in September, he visited China and remarked that he had very fond memories of his days in China. Before the interview, 
Our crew got in touch with Liu Shiqin, Takayev's lecturer at Beijing Language and Culture University. Liu recorded a video message saying that he would love to have President Takayev back to his alma mater and catch up on the good old days. What do you want to say to Mr. Liu Shiqin? I would like to tell him that uh, I'm very much grateful. He's a very good uh, teacher. I remember him very well. And I believe that one day I will be able to go to China once again to meet him. Really, he was a very good teacher. Strict? Strict, but very much friendly. And he liked us. So, Mr. President, speaking from personal experience, how do you look at the importance of people-to-people -people engagement between Chinese and Kazakhs, visiting each other's countries, knowing the other's languages, and living the life of China and Kazakhstan have to offer to each other? I've already said about this. It's, uh, I strongly believe that people-to-people -people exchanges and ties are extremely important. And we, uh, being the heads of our states, uh, must do everything in order to promote these kind of exchanges to bring our peoples together and uh, because we share the common uh, destiny, historic destiny. Tohaye 正如我已经之处的那样想念中国菜我们看了那个陆逊的作品陆逊的作品我相信是符合全世界陆逊人的兴趣President Takayev, thank you so much for this opportunity It was my great pleasure to be with you Thank you, Mr. President We have a little gift for you This is from China Media Group and uh, it's uh, a porcelain from the year of the rabbit this year um, the rabbit means agility, upwardness, and uh, upbeat spirit. Thank I you. I appreciate. And I will put it on, on my display in my office, <laughs> personal office, okay? <laughs> and also we have another gift. I know that you're a big uh, table tennis fan. This is a pad signed by a Chinese ping pong tennis world champion. Oh, who is she? Ma Ling. Ma Ling. Ma Ling, you know him? Uh, yes, of course I know. Like this. <laughs> Marine. How do you hold he it? He plays very well. You hold it like this? He plays, uh, he... Yeah, he plays like that. Plays like this. Appreciate and uh, we welcome, we wait for you in China. Yes, yes, see you in China. Since its independence from the Soviet Union, Kazakhstan has carved out a unique path from possessing the world's fourth largest nuclear arsenal to giving up on it and focusing on growing the country's economy, Kazakhstan's story offers a reminder to today's policymakers that is the us versus them style geopolitical confrontation should be a thing of the past. Thank you for watching Leaders Talk. I'm Wang Guanin Astana. I'll see you again next time.